All right, let's go on shape one. To do that, I need a lot of room on my screen and I want to talk to you first really quick um, about um, not only the windows on my screen that I don't need right now, and I'm gonna put the swatches palette here, I'm gonna close the stroke palette because it's available up in this control palette up here. The only two things I'm really gonna keep open as extra stuff are these two, just because I told you I would, okay? I don't need the gradient palette right now. I don't need the transform palette. So I'm gonna move this over and now I have a lot of room on my screen. Um, the difference between, let me, um, let me open up the file. I opened up the file that came in your asset folder because I want you to see how you only have two layers. I have this little thing called clocks because I wanted to um, help you understand something. So this is the way yours is going to open. You see how you have a drawing layer and a tracing layer. I want you to start referring to these as parent layers because I'm going to toggle open the tracing layer and unlock it for a moment. Okay, let me make it bigger. Um, look at how each one of these single shapes that I'm drawing here can be turned off and on. Obviously the upper one over here, this is the second one I did, this is the third one I did, okay. Those are parent layers and they own all of these paths. I can select all of them by clicking on them like this or select individual ones like that with the radial buttons. Okay, please do not work on this by having the tracing layer unlocked. First thing, lock it up. Do not unlock it, okay? Thank you. And then save after every single thing you do. I'm not gonna save it now because I'm gonna close this file. But click to your drawing layer and start working, okay? If you want to, you double click it and make sure that your selection color is the color you can change or want or whatever, okay? So I'm gonna say okay. Now, I'm gonna close that because that's what you're going to start on. So you're going to use the Option or Alt middle mouse button and the space bar to move it down. Option, middle mouse button, zoom, look, zoom to that corner, zoom to that corner, zoom to that corner. So wherever you put your cursor, Option or Alt middle mouse button, click, and you can scroll, okay, great. Um, but I'm gonna close your file because mine looks like this. And I'm not gonna save it. Now, I'm gonna make my page smaller so I can open up the Acrobat file, the PDF file that is your guide. You cannot finish this assignment without watching these movies. You have to watch the movies. I'm gonna make that quite clear. For the rest of the assignments, there are no PDF files except for the very last one called the Neon Clock, which you can, you have to watch the tutorial and you have to um, use the PDF file. But the rest of them don't have PDF files on purpose. Now, I'm gonna zoom into this um, here in a second, but this is what you see when you open up the, the asset file. Here is another picture of it, and here is what it's going to look like when you first draw the shape, you're not going to worry about trying to match the curves. So there's what your first one is going to look like. All right, but now I'm gonna to advance to something that's going to look a little bit scary. See how I said to tear off these and put them on top and the new name for the convert tool is what? It's the anchor point tool, okay? So I'm gonna move it up now and here is what I want to have on the screen and don't panic with this. I will show you what I am talking about and I'm gonna shrink it and move it down like this so I have it all on the screen and you can see how I now can just have my directions here. Here's the Illustrator file, here's the PDF. Okay, so I'll try to do what I need to do as I'm drawing this piece, but I'm gonna move these two little palettes out of the way. I'm not gonna use them because I'm gonna stay in the pen tool when I need the direct select, I'm gonna hold command or control. When I need the anchor point tool, I'm going to hold alt or option. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Now, 
I won't have all of these on the screen as I'm working maybe throughout the other files, but I'm going to do individual movies, five, six minutes long for each shape. All right. So I'm going to scroll into the shape. Make sure, Brian, that you um, lock up or um, have the tracing layer locked. Now I need to use my clocks now and again, so I'm going to lock up the clocks individually, but I can still see them on the screen, okay? I just don't want to lock the parent layer. I only want to lock the individual items in the layer and then leave this open. And to make my icons bigger, if you want to do that, you go over here to the layer palette and you go down to panel options right there and I clicked large it defaults to medium okay so I'm gonna say okay now your file should be named your first initial last name underscore pen path okay that's what you should have saved as to now I want you to see how my what is my fill on it's on none if yours is on white change it do not have it on white I will show you why I'll take the pen tool and I'll click to the drawing layer. Do you see that when I'm selected onto a layer that's locked? See over here, the layer that's locked? See how it's a pen that has like, you can't draw on it. It's got a pen with a little, you can't touch me symbol, whatever. You wanna click to a layer that's not locked. Okay, so now I'm in, I can see the pen. But look if I actually select this, do you see how by having a fill of white, you can't see the red line underneath. Do you see by having a fill of none, you can? Let me zoom in. Option or Alt, middle mouse button, zoom in. So here is white, and I don't need the transform palette, and here is none. Okay, very important that you are on none. So let me hit how many deletes, because there's open points and closed points. How many deletes? Two, one, two. Now. I'm going to start and then I'm going to move very quickly because you can watch this over and over again. So you have to make sure that your stroke is on one point and bring the stroke to the front. I don't know why that's coming up like that. Bring the stroke to the front and make it one point, not, not two. You don't have to go to this list. You can use these up and down arrows. Okay, so if it's two or 0.75, make it one point. All right, so don't worry about if you don't have the perfect coverage right off the bat. So I'm going to come over here and it just says, look, number one, how many points are in this whole shape? I want you to see that. One, one, two, three, four. Not five, not six, not seven, not ten. Just four points. You have to have only four points to complete this shape. So let's do it. Let's do exactly what it said. So I'm just gonna move this down for now. The first one says just to CLK. So you just take the pen and you click. Now I missed. I'm not very close on that point. Do I care? No, don't, don't care. Use the space bar and I'll move this over. Let me take the layer palette and make it slightly smaller so I have the whole screen to work in today. The whole screen. So over here, what does it say? Number two, look where I'm pointing. Number two says to shift click. Okay, so that means hold the shift key and click over here to make a straight line. There's your first one. Is it accurate? No. Do you care? No. Now when you see the word then, read this. The word then means to completely release the mouse. Well, I did. I'm not holding anything. Now, I tell you here, I'm going to move this over. Uh, I guess I can't move it over because it's the whole page, but let me zoom in. All right, um, and let me click away from that. See where it says to pull click to 8 o'clock? Let me move, make that bigger. See where it says pull click? That means to pull, hold your mouse button and pull out a handlebar to 8 p.m. See that line right there? It's going approximately if the center of this was a clock, where that number two point is, this would be pointing to about 8 p.m. Now what I've done for you is I made a little clock. Look at how I have a little clock right here. See where it says eight o'clock? 
Now I'm going to turn this off or, or I can dim this layer to a whole bunch. I can dim this layer to like that much. Well, I guess it's not going to dim like that. So um, I have to actually use opacity on it. So if I unlock it, go like this and use an opacity to like 20%. So you barely see it and I'll lock it back up. Okay. Now you get the feeling what I'm talking about, right? That this, this point here is the center of the clock and you pull your handlebar out this way. So I hit the P key. All right. I click to my drawing layer. I was getting that symbol saying I can't work on it. Hold the command key for the direct selection or go click the direct selection and click that. Now hit the P key for the pen and pull out a handlebar in that direction. Do you see how I did that? The, don't make it too long, but just pull out the handlebar in that direction. Now, I won't dim the other ones, but now you go to the second point. So let's, let's go down to this point right here. Um, sorry about this, but it's going to, um, um, let me zoom in now. Okay, the second point is pull click to seven. Gosh, I don't like when it does that. So pull click to seven. Then, which means to let go of the mouse, option or alt. Sorry, you PC people. This says option or alt pull click to 10. And it's colored blue because that's the third thing you do. So again, I am going to pull click to seven. That's this black arrow. Then I'm going to option pull click to 10 to get the next handlebar ready for this curve. I know that's a lot, but just listen to how I do it. And then I'm going to redo it and show you how fast I can get it done. So I go back in the pen, as I said, and I pull click to eight. Now look, pull click to seven. I'll turn on the next clock. See where it says pull click to seven? So I go in this point and I pull click to about seven o'clock. Don't worry about the shape. Now let me turn off the clock. Now it says to go over here and pull click to 10, but I have to hold the alt or option key when I do that. So let me turn off this clock. Let me zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. This handlebar that's right here, which you pull click to seven, has to go in this direction because the line changes direction. So let me turn this off. And I'm gonna do this a couple of times so you get used to how easy this is. But I'm gonna go to hold the option or alt key and watch this handlebar here now change direction. Take, don't take your eye off this handlebar. It's not that I'm putting a new handlebar in there. I'm changing the direction of the other one. And you see how I've pull click to about 10 o'clock. I'll turn that back on and you can see that I pull click to about 10 o'clock, right? Okay, now that's the last of the clocks. I just wanted you to get used to what I'm talking about when I pull click. Now I'm going to turn off all the clocks and I'm going to start over. Okay, I hit two deletes. Now watch. Let me make this smaller and move it down. Okay, one is click, two is shift click. Now I let go. I pull a handlebar out to eight o'clock. I pull a handlebar down here till seven o'clock. I now hold alt or option and I pull a handlebar to 10. That's it. One more time, two deletes, click, shift click, let go, pull a handlebar to eight, pull a handlebar to seven, hold alt or option and pull a handlebar to where? To 10. Now look over here. It says pull click to 10. Oh, there's two thens, which means I let go twice. So I pull click to about 10 o'clock. Here's nine o'clock. Here's 10 o'clock. Here's 11 o'clock. Here's 12 o'clock. So I go to about 10 o'clock. Now it says to re-click and I see why. Let me zoom in a little bit. Do you guys see how this is a straight line? Well, straight lines don't need handlebars, right? 
So with the pen, I can re-click the point and it gets rid of the handlebar. Now, down here it says, shift click on point one. Oh, so hold the shift key, Brian, and click on point one. I think I missed a little bit. So click, hold the shift key and click, and now I've closed the shape. Now, doesn't that look just exactly like this? Look at how that looks just like this. So let me move this one down. Let me go to the illustrator shape and look at how that's exactly the way it is. Now, Brian, you have a problem. Before you go to edit and try to cover up the red line, your points aren't in the right place. Now I have to have you see something. Can you all tell me what one of these three tools I use to click individual points. It's called the direct select, right? So I click it. I now hold um, Alt or Option and I zoom into this point. Now it looks, oh, I missed. I actually missed. Oh, no, there's a little handlebar there. See that little tiny handlebar there? I must have done something wrong. How do I fix it? How do I get rid of that handlebar? Well, the answer is two things. I can't re-click the point with the pen anymore because the point's already there. So I use the anchor point tool and just click in that point and did you see what happened? Now look at how far that point is away from where it needs to be. So I'm going to use the direct select tool. I'll explain to you what this little shape is to the bottom here. Okay, don't touch it right now, please. And I'm going to click this point. Now, I click that point knowing that with the direct select tool, the other points, I'm zooming out so you can see that the other points are open points. Well, open points can't move. So I'm going to move over, spacebar, move over, hold Alt or Option and zoom in. Okay, so I grab this point and I'm gonna put it away somewhere, like right there. Now I'm gonna grab it again and you see how easy it was to put it exactly where it needs to go. Now let's go down here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, use my space bar to go up like this, hold Alt or Option and zoom in. Now this is a little trick. In and I do it all the time. In the direct selection tool, click your, your one point, put it away somewhere where it's far away, so or away from the, where it's supposed to be. Now, pick it up again and you see how easily you can find where it's supposed to go. Okay, that's two points out of four that I fixed. So I'm gonna zoom out, zoom out, use the space bar and the hand to move over. Now, how do I zoom in? I hold Alt or Option and I scroll. Now, am I sure that's in the right place? Well, I have to click with the direct selection tool and move it. Now pick it up and move it again. And now that's in the right place. Let's zoom out. That's Alt or Option, scroll middle mouse button, space bar, move down. Now how do I get close? Alt or Option and zoom in on the middle mouse button. Look at how bad that one was. Now, what should I do? Should I try to figure out where it's supposed to go like this or wouldn't it be easier to put it over there? Now, pick it up and can you see how you can just make it sure it's going in exactly the right place? Okay, now save your file. So I can actually hit Command S or Control S to save. And I wanna save all the time. Now, I'm going to, since I've drawn the first shape, make my um, page bigger so I have the whole page to work in because I want to show you guys something. Look at, I'm going to select away. I'm going to select back. I'm going to make sure that you understand what a white fill is because some of you are going to have a white fill at this point. So I'm going to click the fill and click, that should not be happening that should not be coming back every single time. I'm gonna click, oh, I know why, it's the color. I know why. Um, I'm going to click the fill, 
and click the white. Now do you see how it covered up the red line? Gosh, I almost have it perfect already, right? <gasps> no, because I covered it up. So let's go over to where I have the first boo-boo and let's scroll in. Now I want you to understand when you grab a handlebar, you control the line. If you move out farther, the line moves out farther. If you go to the other side of the curve, the wrong side of the curve, it goes to the other side of the curve. So where does a handlebar go when something is curved? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that the very first part of the handlebar should kind of align or lay on the curve. So don't look out here where I'm actually circling. I'm going to move it so that the first part of the handlebar is right on the curve. Now let's go down. So I scroll out. Now I scroll in. I'll use the space bar to move it down. You're going to do that a million times. Now I'm going to move it out this way on purpose so you see that I can move it back and get it just about exactly right with only a couple of moves. Command S to save or Control S to save. Now let's go over here. This looks hard, but I want you to understand when you click this line segment, I'll show you what those little things are right there in a few minutes. When you click this line segment, remember that this handlebar owns half the curve. So only look at what I'm circling here in red. Only look there. But I'm going to pull way out here and match the curve about right here. Okay, now watch this one. I grab this one and look at how the line follows me right to about here. Now I'm not looking out here. I'm looking. My visual um, target is right here. So even though I'm pulling way over here to the right, don't look over here to the right. Look at half of the curve. Now you can see how I did that. Now you have to play a back and forth game. So space bar, move down, Brian. Let's grab this one and pull out a little farther. Now don't look where you're pulling, look right there. Here, I'll do it again. I'll put this one back. So let me click it. Let me put it back. Now, don't look out here. Don't look there. Look here. So I'll grab it again. Okay. Now, let go, Mr. Soriel, now. Now grab this one and look at the curve. Oh boy, those tolerances. Illustrator has made the tolerances to grabbing one of those little anchor points really tough. Anyway, look at how I'm now, that's my fourth edit on just this line. Here's my fifth edit. Look at how I'm pulling out to the left and I've got that curve just about right. Now let me zoom in. How do you zoom in? Alter option middle mouse button, scroll. Space bar, move over. Now grab this one and just a little tiny, bring it out a little tiny. Oh, I've almost got it. Now space bar here, grab this one, just another little tiny one right there, <gasps> almost. And if I see a little red, it's okay. You're never gonna get it absolutely perfect, although some of you will try. Now look at how gorgeous I did. I actually took seven edits by pulling and pulling and pulling to get this done and I recommend that you actually watch this a couple times. Now I'm going to click this and I'm going to click a point and I want you to see, especially this point, what happens and why Illustrator actually created these things. Um, I can't pull it out any farther but those create curves. Instead of having a straight point here and if you if you accidentally grab it, just Command or Control Z back. But watch, I can pull this and curve the line. It created two of these. Now I want to show you something pretty cool in a second, but I am going to back off of this and show you that it only did one curve, right? Right? One curve. So I'm going to Command Z back. So I'm going to do that curve and say, okay, uh-uh, Command Z back. I'll click this one and I'll do that curve. Look at now I've curved that one. Or if you grab it with the regular selection tool and then click to the direct selection tool. Here, let me do that again. So if you have it selected and you click it, 
then you click to the regular selection tool, then back to that selection tool, you actually get, I have to do it the right way. Now I have all four. Look at how all four are visible because all four points are filled. Let me move this down because I want you to see something. If you grab one with all the points selected, all of the corners change, all of them. So that's just kind of a fun thing that Illustrator added uh, about three or four or five versions ago. So I'm going to Command Z back. So if you only want to affect one, click the one point with the direct selection tool and boom. If you want to do the whole thing, marquee the whole shape. Now you can have with the direct select tool or select the regular tool, then back to the direct select tool. Then you can do these two. Now, what if you only wanted these two to work? So I command Z back. I now use the direct select tool. I only grab these two and you see how I'm only actually curving those two. So it, it how often do you use that? Not a whole bunch, but that's the end of the first shape. And let's go to the second shape. And from now on, I'm going to bring up the PDF file like this, like I'm going to get it ready for the second shape. Okay, so let's scroll up to the second shape right there. And now let's scroll up to the second shape right here. Now what I should do is make this a lot smaller so I don't have that problem that I was having before. So let me now scroll down. So I'm going to get this one right here. Let me scroll out and get the second one ready. So there's the second one, the shorthand strokes for the second one. I'll put them down here so you can see them. And now I have this one ready. So I'm all ready for the second movie. Thank you.